Hello, my name is Mark Pachabosky. I work for Ascent uh, and Ran 3 d which are all Ran Worldwide companies. Uh, today we're going to take a look at how to use the dress up command to be able to apply parts to a skeleton model and make a uh, mechanism uh, representation or simulation out of those parts. Um, basically, uh, the reason we have a dress up command is if you have a, a product line of similar products that have the same range of motion in the products, yet uh, you don't want to have to manually define all of the connections and have to define all of the um, joints and commands in each one of them to be able to simulate them, what we can do is create a skeleton model instead. Um, for example, here we have a trash bin. I've got the sidewall kind of hidden or transparent, but uh, a mechanical trash bin where when we step on the foot pedal, it's going to have all the linkages to lift the lid and allow us to throw our garbage away. Um, the idea is that we might have multiple products of this. We've got this trash bin, but we've also got a trash bin that looks like this. Let's open this up and it's got the same hidden sides, same general working components, but we've got a larger lid uh, and an elongated body to it. Uh, also an elongated uh, foot pedal than what we had before. Now, instead of having to build these as completely separate mechanisms, uh, we're going to build or have built a um, wireframe version of this, which I'll show you. Here's our wireframe version of one of those trash bins. Um, mostly consisting of points, lines, and planes. There are some surfaces in here as well. Those are not necessary in a lot of cases, but uh, a lot of it I put in here more for visualization to know this is, represents the lid. So it's kind of a profile of the lid. This represents the base. Uh, here's where the base stops and the uh, body of the trash bin connects. Uh, here's where the top of the base, or I'm sorry, the top of the body and the uh, lid kind of meet one another. And then we've got the linking rod and the foot pedal down here, just working components. Now, this has been uh, put into a um, mechanism representation. We've already gone to the, well, we're not in sheet metal. Let's switch over to the correct uh, app for this. We're going to use... Uh, mechanism or mechanical systems design is the app we want to use. Uh, I don't need to build a physical product. I'm okay with the one that I'm in, but I will activate. There we go. Uh, mechanical systems design. It's showing mechanism representation is in there, and we've got a command. The command is controlling the foot pedal up and down. And if I simulate that, I can move that foot pedal 18 millimeters. And by moving that foot pedal down 18 millimeters, it's going to cause all those other components to move. So this has already been defined for us. And if you're interested in that kind of stuff, there's uh, other videos that describe how we can mechanize, uh, turn this into a mechanism. Now, what we want to do is show how, that we, how we can use the dress up command to be able to link a finished product to the mechanism that has all of our joints and movements to it. So what I'm going to do is create a new product. I'm going to come in and say new physical product. I'm going to call this top level trash bin and hit OK. So it's just an empty assembly with that uh, trash bin located in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this skeleton, right click on it and say copy and I'm going to paste it into that top level trash bin. So that brings those components in. My mouse doesn't always want to cooperate here. There we go. And in there is our mechanism that actually moves the skeleton. Now, I don't want that to move um, out of its origin position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an engineering connection fix and I'm going to fix the entire skeleton. So I select on that sub assembly and it anchors it down. Now I'll still be able to move the inside components, but 
as a whole unit, it won't move as one in any other location. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to find the trash bin that I want to link to this. So <clears throat> I'm going, I could take this entire trash bin. Uh, I'm simply going to come in and grab all the components. So those components here, and they are already in the right position. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them into my top level trash bin. So they're at the same level as the skeleton. Now, if you needed to bring them in and move them around, we have tools like the manipulate tool, the snap tool, and the smart move tool that allow us, as well as the compass, allow us to move them into position and align them with our references and get them in the right spot. To save time, I already had this trash bin fully assembled. They're aligned with each other in the same origin position, so we didn't have to move them around. Uh, one's just sitting on top of the other. Now, this top level trash bin does not have a mechanism representation built into it yet. We're going to create one. So I go over here to mechanism representation. Uh, I will give it the name mechanism representation uh, top level trash bin. And I'm going to come over here to Mechanism Preferences and make sure that Include All Kinematic Connections into this mechanism is turned on. That means that all of these engineering connections that are listed here, I can't expand it until this window's gone, but any of them that are down here will automatically be brought into the um, mechanism, which there really isn't many. Uh, it was just that fix that I put in, or that anchor that I put in earlier. And then here's Create All Possible Kinematic Commands. Again, there's only one fix constraint, so yes, I'm going to have it turned on, but there's really not much it can pull in. I am also going to turn on this third one here, Link All Independent Sub-Mechanisms. What that does is it pulls in the mechanism that's inside Trash Bin Skeleton. So this sub-assembly has a mechanism in it that's going to pull that information in. When I hit OK, we can see that there's now this assembly level, and it shows the mechanism representation listed underneath there. Okay, now, the joints, the only thing that's there is the fix, which I mentioned before. Uh, what I want to do is I want to um, test this. So I'm going to come over here to Mechanism Player. And currently, when I test it, just the skeleton is moving. The other components are still stationary. They're basically being ignored because there's no constraints or joints applied to them. I'll close that, and it goes back to its original position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the arrow next to Mechanism Manager and click on Dress Up. That brings up this Dress Up window. And all the three-dimensional uh, finished products are listed here, uh, as well as the skeleton. What I'm going to do is click on the... Actually, these are... I'm sorry. These are the uh, generic options. So these are the skeleton models. And I have the generic trash bin base. And it highlights on the skeleton model, which if I expand it, we can see the generic trash bin base is highlighting. I want to link that to the three-dimensional finished product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on the, and I gave them similar names here. I'm going to go with the elongated trash bin base. And it links those two together. Now, before this one was being ignored, now it's basically creating a fixed together joint between the two. So that they're not they're gonna move relative to one another. The base doesn't move, but if it did, it would slide where the uh, skeleton models one moves to. Now I go down the list and do that to everything else. Here we have the generic pedal slider. And in the actual model, we have the um, let's see, generic. We have just called pedal slider. Okay, but it's a three-dimensional model instead of just the wireframe and surface model. Come down here to generic pedal foot. Now, if you know them by graphic, you can click on the graphics as well. But I'm going to come in here and look for uh, elongated pedal foot. Elongated foot pedal. There we go. And... Here we have the lower rocker arm. This is what it pivots on to lift that up. We've got a uh, lower rocker arm. 
And if you accidentally select on the wrong one, you can always right click and be able to remove the link and it disassociates the two. Here's the lifting, um, generic lift rod. We'll come in here and click on lifting rod. Generic sidewalls. So that's the um, body of this. So we've got the sidewalls here, uh, elongated trash bin sidewalls. And we can go grab, finally, the lid link, lid linkage, and generic lid. We want the elongated trash bin lid. So we've selected on all of those. The only one we ignored was the trash bin skeleton itself. So the entire skeleton, remember that was at that level, we can ignore that one because that one's been uh, fixed. We'll hit OK. And now if we go to simulate this the same way we did before, clicking on Mechanism Player and dragging the command back and forth, the components move relative to the skeleton. If I don't want to see the skeleton, we can hide the trash bin skeleton, so it's graphically no longer being displayed. And we can simulate that one more time. Now, if I wanted to go do the same kind of scenario on a different trash bin, what I would do is I would simply take the exact same skeleton that I have here and be able to use it on this example. Or I could swap out components very easily if I had a different type of foot pedal. I could remove that foot pedal, uh, put it in a new foot pedal, and I would be able to click on the dress up command to be able to link it to the skeleton because the skeleton hasn't changed. So when you're swapping out components all the time, but the mechanical movement stays the same, uh, skeletons can be very helpful ways of setting this up. Hope that helps. Have a good day.